A familiar face checking into the sports news right now as we are glad to welcome Perry Hibner back from Middleton. He is a director of communications, also the varsity softball head coach. And Perry, always good to see you. And we got a lot to catch up on with you as the Middleton High School girls swimming team, uh, they ended up capping off another season and another impressive one as well last night. They did. They won their uh, third consecutive WI Division I state championship wow. on Saturday. Um, what made it even more impressive was they weren't able to use their 400-yard freestyle relay team because they were disqualified at sectionals because of an illegal start. But a couple of impressive performances, one being sen senior Hannah Edgerton, who uh, took first in the 500 freestyle and second in the 200 freestyle. She also uh, played a key role in two relays that took first and second respectively. A couple other girls who I should mention are sophomore Ali Silvestri, who took uh, fourth in the 100 and uh, junior Gabrielle Pierborn Mays, who took fourth in the 100 butterfly and 100 backstroke. What made her impressive, Rich, was the fact that she had uh, surgery on her shoulder in the off season, so it wasn't even 100%. So they'll go for four straight next year, and if they do that, they'll be the first school since Heartland Arrowhead in the early 2000s to win four in a row. Wow, and our very own Tony Verga, he said he was out there last night. He says a madhouse when you go uh, to that state swimming uh, event, so pretty cool uh, out there, and congratulations to the Middleton girls. Let's talk some boys cross country. They didn't get to repeat as champions champions, but still pretty good season for them, huh? They did. They So they took second at the Division I state meet October 27th in Wisconsin Rapids, finished nine points behind Nina. Um, Caleb Easton, who's going to be uh, running next year at Northern Arizona, which is a powerhouse in Division I cross country at the NCAA level, led the way with a seventh place finish. And then uh, what was even more impressive, the next four finishers are all underclassmen. So I think they felt like they would have repeated, but their number two runner, Roman Yesdenis, uh, missed the last few meets of the year with an Achilles injury. So. Since uh, over the last five years, they've taken sixth, fourth, third, first, and second at cross country, and I think they'll be in the top two or three next year as well. Impressive. Speaking of impressive, the boys' volleyball team, six straight appearances at the state tournament. Was that good enough for them? I think they were a little disappointed with how things finished up. So they won the Big 8 Conference for the 12th time in the last 13 years. Um, they were seeded at state for the first time ever um, and went as the third seed but lost at Kenosha Indian Trail in five sets in the quarterfinals on Friday night. So they had beaten Indian Trail during the regular season. So they had a great season, but they're going to have to replace five starters, two of the big ones being um, Egan uh, peters Michaud, who uh, is the school record leader in kills, and setter Matt Balwig, who's also the uh, leader in assists. So um, they'll be good next year, but a lot to replace. We only got about 20 seconds left. Boys and girls basketball, what are your outlooks for them? Uh, they'll both be strong. The girls team is really loaded in the front court, led by seniors Hannah Flotmeyer and then juniors Karina Bursick and Satori Tannen, who's actually a Division I recruit at the mid-level. And then boys basketball, they finished fifth last year and have to replace five starters, but um, they've got Sam Close back along with uh, Jack Boyle and Jake Kluberton. So uh, Kevin Bavery is expecting big things from them as well this year. We had so much more to get to. Sorry we didn't have more time. Perry, always good to see you, man. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics.